<clears throat> All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. I wanted to take some time today to talk about this little beautiful little mech mod RDA combo right here. This is the Iona. It is a British designed question mark manufactured. I don't know where it's manufactured, but it is British designed mech mod RDA combo. It's overall pretty stellar. There's a few weird little quirks with it. Not really with the mech, more with the RDA, but we're going to get to all of that right now because in order to get to know all this just a little bit better, what we're going to do is go up close as we always do. So you can really, I mean, up close, closer than this, maybe not closer than that. Quick, short, up, close time, yeah, go. <clears throat> All right, yeehaw, well, here we go. Project Iona, this is their mech kit, mech RDA combo. Very, very cool, very, very nice feeling. It has a lot of quality to it. There's this really nice, I don't know, sort of engraved sort of phoenix bird on there. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it. Feels nice. I was worried this would feel a little bit like chalkboard. It does not. This is just beautiful. If we pop this RDA off, of here, which we're going to get back to that in just one second. See a threaded hybrid 510 connection right there. Here, here's the switch on the bottom and the switch housing. It kind of has a little bit of like a chain link fence looking texture there, so you can easily unscrew it, screw it back down. All the threads on this are just fantastically nice and smooth. There's your switch on the bottom. It's kind of a honker, but it is a wonderful, wonderful press. The resistance from the spring in here is damn near perfect, and it's just a little bit zippy, and that's from the machining texture on the inside. I really enjoy that zippy feeling, but I know it's only temporary because over time, that zippiness just, it goes away. It wears down and goes away, but why? While it's here, I love it. And it's engraved on the bottom, Mortal Kombat 1. Ah, I'm just kidding, that's Mark 1. To take up for your battery rattle, there's a self-adjusting spring-loaded sort of Ultem ring that your battery sits on, and you can see when you press the button, your contact comes up. One very large spring, one contact right here, and that's all she wrote. The rest of this is just one piece with that floating sort of a Delrin battery rattle adjustment. Or it's not even an adjustment, it's just a battery rattle I don't know, eliminator. Right, let's put this back together. So contact goes in, spring goes on the plunger, plunger gets threaded in. All right, now I want to take a look at this RDA, which is probably my least favorite part of this. I like this mech so much more than I like this RDA. I think it's overall just a really bad design. So you can see this seam along here it kind of drops down into a little notch and kind of raises there and then drops down into another little notch. The notches are just really, really shallow and kind of slip out very, very frequently. If you go to grab this top cap to unscrew it, chances are it's just going to pop right out of those notches. The notches don't really serve that much purpose unless you press down real hard and then give it a twist and then you can get the RDA off. But did you see how silky smooth those threads are? So I don't love the little notch, but what the little notch does is lines up your airflow right there. Your airflow is always going to see be in the same place and you can see straight across. There's no airflow adjustment. It's just these two little ovals. 810 drip tip on top and then if we pull this off, then you can get a look at the deck. So remember, we're still looking at the angle that your airflow goes through. So your airflow goes through through the center of those posts. And you can see this has some fairly large post holes right there. Now, my main, main gripe with this, I don't know why I'm closing those down. I need to open those up to build on it. I was gonna say, my main gripe on this is honestly, it's the worst kind of gripe. It's building on this deck. Looks and functions a little bit like the original Reload Vapor Reload RDA, but it's honestly kind of a pain in the ass to build on and the reason why is the distance between these posts, it's just a really awkward distance. It looks like you could fit two dual coils in there, like real easy, right? I'm just going to demonstrate my frustrations building on this just a little bit with some fiends, framed staples. These should come out to a 0 0.11, 0 0.13 on a dual, which for a single battery mech is going to be perfect. So I'm going to try to build this. I'm going to do some experimenting. I'm not going to explain every step of it, but the first thing I'm going to explain is I'm going to do the old school school tugboat v1 scoop technique on the old tugboat v1s you kind of had to scoop your coils into it so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to 
curve these leads like into a into a scooping sort of thing so that maybe I can scoop them into those post holes a little bit easier. Additionally, I'm going to cut these down about halfway. Well, I'll be damned. That scooping technique worked wonders. That was that was a thing of beauty right there. Fiends uses three millimeter coils, and those coils are just about as big as you could possibly go in this. I should have used a pair of Turks two and a half millimeter coils, but I think these three millimeter coils are gonna work. And what I wanna do is I've tried to lower them down as best I could. And to be safe, we're going to be pulsing these on a Jackaroo regulated mod. Well, they are glowing evenly and they are very, very close together. I, I'm shocked that those coils aren't actually touching right there, but they're not. <laughs> they heat up independently of each other and there's no hot spots in the middle where they basically look like they're touching. A yeah, three millimeter coils might have been a bad decision in here, but fuck it. Let's just keep going. Got my wicks in and I'm just going to cut these like flush with the side of the RDA right there. Whoops. Pop, pop. Pop, pop! All right, well, the coils came out to a 0.13. They're built, they're glowing, they're wicked. We're gonna put this back on the mech mod, which is surprisingly only a single 18650. For this size, I was assuming at least a 2700, if not a 21700, but we work with what we got. Put that switch on and the threads, oh, so nice. Obviously, because those coils are just right there in the middle, bleh your liquid with immunity. Immunity, impunity. I never say the right word there. Oh yeah, vapors. So there you go, built, wicked. Let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape the damn thing. Normal view. So that was about 48 hours ago and I've been using this exclusively ever since. And here's the thing. It's not a bad mech mod. It's a very well built, beautifully machined, just overall really pretty mech mod. Feels real nice in the hand. Like I said before, love the switch, love the switch assembly, love how well this hits. It's a good mech mod. My main gripe with this is all about the RDA. The RDA has worse fit and finish, a little bit awkward of a deck. It's got a lot of play in this top cap. It doesn't really seat down into those notches very well and any little bump or movement, this top cap is just wobbling around like a crazy little wobbling top cap. Additionally, I don't like the airflow. Did I already say that? I don't like the airflow. I don't like the way it sounds. I don't like the way that it feels. And the biggest bummer to me on this RDA, apart from all of those issues, is that it's really lacking in flavor, especially the harder you drag on it. It just seems, just seems to take the flavor level down. The only way to get some really decent flavor from this RDA is to kind of slow your roll a little bit. Just pull that, you know, your draw velocity down just a little bit and it's gonna vape pretty good for you. Fairly nice, fairly warm, a little bit flavorful in there. Now, uh, let's get down to brass tacks. The asking price on this is about 200 British pounds, which in US money is about 100 and 200, sorry, $265, which is, wow, firmly, firmly into vape budget hands territory. Now, if we're gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they have come and taken everything I have and I have nothing left to vape, is the Iona something I would seek out and buy right away? 
I mean, probably not. I'm just gonna go ahead and say definitely not. The mech itself is beautiful, but I feel like it's hindered by being only a single 18650 battery in a world of much bigger and higher performing and higher milliamp hour and higher amp limit 2700 and 21700 batteries. Once you start using those batteries on mechs, it is honestly a little bit difficult to go back to a single 18650. 50. Additionally, it's just the cost, it's just the issues. It's nice, but it's not something that I would necessarily seek out and buy. No links are allowed in the description, so you're gonna have to use your Google Foo, but thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, that's right, let's, let's keep on vaping. <laughs>